Hello everyone. I hope this finds you well and doing good, staying healthy in this pandemic environment. Today is June 9th. I had a little bit of time, so I thought I'd, I'd talk a little bit. Today's talk is going to be about ego. And there's a couple things. I haven't really planned this out specifically, but um, I'm going to give it a shot. And I hope this helps some people. You know, these are just simply my thoughts, my experiences. By no means have I grown to a place where I could preach about anything. I can only talk about my experiences and things that are going on. Uh, I do a lot of reading. I still do. As you can see, books behind me. You know, I've given a lot of books away over the years. So, but anyways. So I'm still studying. I'm still struggling to be the best human being that I can be. Um, these days with demonstrations and the riots going on for George Floyd. Um, I have a very good friend, a black guy, and he's, you know, talked to me about his perspective. And I, I've read some things online that talk about a black person's perspective and, and how they're hassled by cops all the time, you know, and I I sympathize with them because I'm never hassled, you know, white guy driving in a pickup. They don't hassle me. I don't know why they would want to hassle any, anybody else. Uh, you know, it used to be statistically you could say this and you could say that. But uh, still, you know, unless they have true just cause for pulling somebody over and even then they technically have limited rights but they tend to step over those rights because most people don't know their rights you know it, and if you especially as a black person if you try to put your foot down and say I know my rights and this is what I'm this is what I want you can end up in a world of hurt and this is not the way the world should work it really shouldn't. Um, I have an, a number of colored people, if you want to say that, people of brown color, as friends, as family. Many. Part of my family. And I love them all dearly. I mean, they're people. Some are better than the others as human beings uh, the color of their skin never comes into play it never makes a difference you know I've, I've played music most of my life and I've had a number of black people play with me one of the best singers I've ever played behind I played behind an enemy R&B band for 20 something years and most of the band were black except me and the guitar player and it never made a difference you know they were people real persons color didn't make a difference jeez their talent is what set them apart as people and their personalities and their spirit but I'm gonna I'm not gonna go down that rabbit hole too far. So educate yourself about other people before you make any comments. You know. Let me tell you a little story. Just going down that rabbit hole a little bit. I was teaching two South Korean girls, teenagers in high school. And I was teaching them flute together. They're sisters, twins, fraternal, not fraternal. In other words, they look nothing alike. 
beautiful girls, heart and soul were beautiful, beautiful, talented, smart as a whip, straight A students. They volunteered at hospital, children's hospitals, I believe, and I taught them for I don't know about four years or so, on and off, mostly on, and. I grew to cherish them quite dearly as students and as people. And I heard about the, uh, I call it bullying, but I would say it's racism. New England, of all freaking places. There were a lot of people during the Civil War that helped slaves earn their way to freedom. Especially to Canada, or they would give them places to live around here. And in this day and age, to bully somebody because of where their parents came from, or what they looked like because they had Asian features. Really? That's as smart as you can be? I just apologize whenever they went through one of those episodes. I apologize to them. I'm sorry you went through that. And, and I'm sorry for to all the different people of the world that no matter what color, what personality, what what whatever, what differences you may have, if you, if you get harassed or bullied or shamed for being who you are, I apologize. And I don't care where where that came from. People shouldn't be shamed about what they are. You should look into a person's heart and see who they are. You know, do they treat other people well? You know, I'm that's what I'm more concerned about. How do you treat other people? You treat them well? You steal from them? Uh, the, in other words, the looters that I see, uh, I'm not so crazy about that. The peaceful protesters? I'm crazy about that. I, there was a, a rally this past weekend, and I really wanted to go to support my friend and support the cause, but I could not. I could not. My home life and the, the risk of uh, the pandemic, I just couldn't justify it bringing it into my home. Or the chance, that little chance of bringing it into my home. I just don't do that. Just don't do it. But I was there in spirit with them. And I called my friend who did go, you know, every day, Saturday and Sunday, even Monday, and asked me, how did it go? How were things? How were you? Luckily, things were very well. Very well. And I'm very proud of him. We did a, uh, a drum for peace thing. Two days in a row. Guys older than I am. And he poured his heart out. He was, this poor guy was exhausted when it was over Sunday night. And I, I give him kudos for doing something good in the world. Trying to bring a little bit of peace to the world. You know, we should all do that. So, that's my take on that. So, I'm gonna, today, I haven't said this yet, but I'm, if I have, I'm repeating myself. We're going to talk about ego. I've learned a lot recently. When I was in high school, college, I took some psychology courses. Nothing in depth, mind you, just general overview courses. But they always talked about the ego, the conscience, and the subconscious, and, and all of that. And uh, I was raised as a Catholic. And I remember thinking about God as this uh, 
not so benevolent entity that we had to fear because he was a jealous God. And uh, Jesus as his wonder savior, you know, perfect human being that we could never attain to. You know, they were supposed to try to emulate, but a lot of people spoke the word, but didn't do the deed, so to speak, didn't do the action. And I admit, you know, if you really read the Bible and acting like Jesus did, that's a tough road. Especially nowadays, that's a real tough road. I wish I had the uh, strength of courage and the uh, spirit to follow that path. Sadly, I do not. But I have a home life. So, I'm trying to use my strength of character and courage to carry my home life the best I can. But I've been doing a lot of reading, especially from Dr. Wayne Dyer with his books. I read one of his books in the past and I've been rereading it and I'm going on to other books and he has a lot to say about ego let me say this about my current understanding of what I think our ego is there's three parts to a person. Some people think of it as uh, mind and heart. Nowadays, I, I tend to think of it as ego, mind, and spirit. Now, let me explain a little bit about what I think those are. Your ego is your emotions, good and bad. Okay, I talked about the wolves last week in making choices, right? But to me, the, the ego part is the emotions. The emotional part of us, our feelings, good and bad. You know, happiness, sadness, not that we shouldn't have them. We should have them. We're human beings. We were genetically biologically built to have emotions and we should we should they can get us out of bad situations sometimes they can get us into bad situations but you know happiness is a good thing fear is a good thing um but i'll talk about more of that in a minute okay so that's the ego feelings the mind to me is the analytical part of things when we try to figure things out math and science and all of that just trying to figure things out that's what the mind is it's kind of devoid of emotion you can call it clinical if you want you know, analytical yeah i'm hip to that that's what i think it is but then there's the spirit of us the soul, if you will. Spirit is that God made part of us. That came from the no form to form. If you dig deep, deep down into quantum physics, beyond the subparticles and the microparticles and the quarks, and beyond that, and beyond the energy and the particles who came from no form. So at some point our no form became form when we were conceived. There's some cultures that don't believe we become we don't have a spirit until I don't know, after the war. I don't know. I don't know. My brain, my gut, you know, tells me that I think the moment we're conceived, 
is when the spirit enters or becomes that formless to form becomes the spirit so I think very much that we have a spirit and that is our true selves the agents talk about having three hearts your public heart your private heart and then your true self and yeah I think that's what the spirit is, is our true selves so getting back to the ego the ego is good to have like I said before you know if you become frightened there's a reason when you become happy there's a reason right become sad depressed and sometimes for some people they just can't control those emotions and sometimes biologically there's a I don't know, this fire in the brain that hormones too much this or too much that fire in the, those emotions just come reflecting out and it's a struggle for them you know guys that have gone through world with the PTSD I had a uh, friend who was in college studying civil engineering at the time and we were in a math class called statics and statics is when you have two forces that equal each other okay if you have a house sitting on the ground you want the ground to push up with equal force so that the house doesn't sink you want it to push it up with equal force so it's called statics like you know something on an equilibrium you don't want it one way or the other you just want it to push the other well, there's a lot of calculations that goes on and it, it was a difficult course not an impossible course but a difficult course I found it rather fun but I met this gentleman he was a contractor uh, he had his own business doing contracting sheetrock and, and building houses and all kinds of stuff and he wanted to learn more about statistics and in the first couple of weeks it went pretty easy it went very good he didn't have a problem but then when you know some of the bigger tests started coming around he would do like half the test and then split like so I talked to him about it one day when I saw him after class and it was like what's going on dude why, why did you leave in the middle of, of the test he had an anxiety attack I didn't know what to say and still if somebody has an anxiety attack I wouldn't know what to say because I I don't have anxiety attacks at least not that I know of I mean not that I haven't gotten anxious and fearful and I have I've gotten very very fearful in my life but not to where I panic like that I mean, absolute bug out but he did and he wasn't able to finish the course because when midterms came up his anxiety kicks in and he couldn't even walk into class and I felt so bad for the guy I wish there was something I could do to help him my point of all this is we should strive not to not have feelings but not let them rule us have them and let them go I won't admit I'm perfect on this okay it's something I'm striving for myself but have your emotions your depression your happiness your anger but don't get self wrapped up into it let it go let it go come back to equilibrium don't swing from side to side some bipolar people do that but there's a usually a reason a medical reason why that happens and we've got some drugs that help I don't think we've gotten it perfected by any means but my heart goes out to those people and 
they have a, a tough path to struggle with those emotions from the manic high energy to the uh, manic depression where they can't do anything they can't even get out of bed uh, it's a tough, tough, tough road. my heart goes out to you um all I can say is meditate and try to get your emotions into handle and let them go you know well, I'm rage, but don't let them control you. Same thing with the mind. And this happens to me a lot, and I'm working on it. But my brain goes into overdrive, and I start thinking about things. Not necessarily emotionally, but analyzing and, and overdrive. And sometimes music will take over. Now, analyze that. That bad. I don't mean to, but it happens to me. I mean, that, that's one of my main interests in life is music. And I'm trying to bottle that gene, if you will, so that I only do it when I need to. Not when I need to, when I want to. And the desire is there, but I don't have to do it. You know, I you can't do something 24-7. It's not good for you. I'm not saying moderation. you got to have passion about what you do. But be totally focused on what you're doing and enjoy it. I enjoy my music. This past weekend, I, I spent outside most of the weekend. Um, I enjoyed myself tremendously. I... Try to use that as an exercise of a focus. Right? I had some woodworking that I had to do. I had to do some yard cleanup that I had to do. Uh, I got my one of my gazebos up and running. Uh, furniture out, pads out. Uh, worked on the pool. I finally got the pool open. Yay! I know it's almost the middle of June, but hey. Yeah. It is what it is. I'm still working on the pool, but it'll get there before the hot weather really hits. I think. But I'm trying to stay focused on what I'm doing in the moment that I'm doing it. Even when I'm at work, you know, I try to focus and enjoy what I'm doing. But then there comes the spirit part. Do you cultivate your spirit? Really? And I'm not just talking about praying. Because spirit, like anything, is an action. How do you treat other human beings? Do you react to when somebody's having a bad day? The other day, I'm trying to go to the bank. I'm in my truck. Driving my Ford F-150 2002 truck. I love my truck. I do. One of the first few brand new vehicles I ever bought. And it still runs like a top. But anyways, I'm trying to go to the bank. And a little side street to the bank is also where you can see it. And there's people in their car in the line going down the street. And the only way for me to get to the bank is drive by me. So I start, I get in the left lane, there's nobody coming. And I get up almost to the head of, head of where the brake is in the line, and the lady starts taking a little bit of left on beat the horn. Um, she was not happy about that, let's say that. Give me the finger. I just wave to her. Hi! I'm going that way. That's why I'm here. You don't make the speed. So, did I get upset about it? No. I mean, why should I get upset about her reaction? It's only going to bother me. Like I was talking about last week, my anger. I had to let go. And I just realized it was only hurting me. 
So that was the start of my road to learning to handle my reactions. Unfortunately, I don't always react like I should. I don't become involved. I'm not very a fast thinker emotionally on my feet. I'm not a great debater. I wish I was, but I'm not. I've had hearing issues all my life, so it didn't behoove me to react too quickly, so I could figure the hell this person saying. I'm not saying something stupid that. Identity, I know, but to have it now is very hard to break. And so I, I try not to react too quickly. Too badly. Have a ways to go. I'm not saying you're perfect. I'm working on it. But I'm trying to cultivate my spirit to be the forefront before my brain, before my ego. Do you do that? You think about that? It's, we come from God. We are children of God. We are all, all things, all things, everything has to come from God. It came from something. It came from formless to form. Who created the forms? Okay. Holy God. Or, if that's what you want to call it. You call it the Great Spirit. You call it the Tao. Japanese. Tao. They say it comes from the Tao, the Great Void. And I never quite understood that before. The Void. What is the Void? Well, I believe God is beyond our comprehension. The matter is it what you call it. Great Spirit, Allah, God, Father God, Tao, Buddha, Buddhism, Hinduism. Hinduism, you know, people think, oh, they worship many gods. Actually, no, they worship one god. It's just that there's many incarnations or many sub-gods, if you will paths to the one. So, I don't think about it. So anyways. So when we use our ego to judge people, going back to what I talked about in the beginning, when we use our ego to judge people because of what we think they should be or shouldn't be. You haven't walked a mile in the shoes. I'm not saying all people are perfect, but they're all people of God, whether they know it or not. None of us is above one or the other. We're all the same in God's eyes. What does God look at? God look at this beard, this mustache, this bald head. It's the color of my spirit. He doesn't care about my ego. He doesn't care about my brain, my mind. He cares about my spirit. Why? Because that's what attaches him to us and us to him. It's our connection with the source, the great creator. It's our connection with the spirit. That's why it should become the forefront of our lives. God knows. I've got a long way to go. But I'm working on it. Little by little, day by day. I'm trying to keep it in the forefront of my mind. So that I can override the ego with my will to keep the Tao of God in front of me. So I'm going to read a, a statement by Dr. Wayne 
diet. And it really resonates to me with all the protests that are going on. On both sides. Okay? Both sides. When you refrain from engaging in judgments against solely based on looks, you become an instrument for change. Powerful words. I'm not going to say it again. When you refrain from engaging in judgments based solely on works, you become an instrument to change that way God. I believe that to be true. That's a truism. No many. But that's one I believe to be true. Don't look at a person's haircut. Don't look at the shape of their clothes or what they're wearing or the gold on their fingers or whatever else around their neck or how they dress. The shoes on their feet. Look at the color of their spirit. What color is their spirit? How big is their heart? I'm going to end today a little bit differently. I've been wanting to do this for a while. I didn't know if I should, but I'm going to. I'm going to end this with a uh, song of mine. The album I put together a while ago. And, um, I didn't do that. That's okay. It looks song for me anyways. But I'd like to share one of the songs with you, along with the video that goes along with it. And I hope you take some time and enjoy it. Relax. Chill out. It's a chill out song. Genre that it's in. Just relax and listen to it. Let the music flow over you. And create something. Hopefully something good. And relax. But until next time, folks, be safe, be well, be happy. God bless you all.